Hey guys, even here with the old school labs, and this right here is what Keon Pearson brought to the Chicago Pro 212 stage, and it is outstanding, it is amazing. I have been following his progress, and if you guys have been watching my videos, I was super impressed with his progress, and I expected him to look insanely good at his show, but this... I mean, I don't know, I, I, I expected something insane, but now when I see it, I'm even more amazed, I'm even more impressed, this is just crazy, guys, now I can officially say I do believe that he was natural at 2000, uh, was it 19 or 18 Arnold Classic, I think it was 2019, he claimed Natty status and nobody believed him, but apparently he, he was natural, because now, when he's officially not, he is making progress left and right like insane, take a look at his physique, can this win the Mr. Olympia? Sure it can, maybe not this year, we'll see, maybe, but can it win the Mr. Olympia, not in 212, but like in the open, eventually, I can see that happen, guys, he's like 25, 26 right now, and he looks, wow, just wow, this is insane. So let's take a look at the callout, the top 5 callout, obviously with Kian in the middle, who else would, would be there? Uh, him and the guy on his left are probably the top 2, but it is uh, a rather easy win for Kian. On the far right here you can also see Jason Law, he's also a pretty well known guy, he transferred from classic physique. Uh, and uh, no, he's not winning this show obviously, but yeah, he cracked the top 5, which is pretty much a success. Uh, though Kian, I mean, the, the lighting here is not, not good, it's really bad lighting, you cannot really see a lot, and also the quality of the footage is not very high. The guy on Kion's left that's placing second has insane <laughs> tie sweep, hamstring sweep, that's, that's, that's insane. Uh, anyways, the, I, I mean, it's close between these two guys, the guy uh, on the left, on Kion's left, on our right, uh, has probably better conditioning. Take a look at the glutes, the glutes are absolutely peeled and full and hard and everything, but the structure, like take a look at the back and from the front as well, uh, he's not as blessed uh, genetically as Kian, and I think for that reason Kian will win, for sure, he's more developed. Yeah, in bodybuilding, uh, like in open division, conditioning is, up, is important, sure, but it's not the, the number one thing. If it was the number one thing, Rolly Winkler wouldn't place fifth uh, at the Mr. Olympia 2019, and uh, Patrick Moore wouldn't be 10th, right? Patrick Moore would have won that show if uh, conditioning was everything, but apparently it's not, and uh, it shouldn't be. It's not all about conditioning. In some categories, sure, but not in this one. Uh, here, the fullness, the size, the symmetry, the aesthetics, they all play a role, and Kion is definitely leading. He has uh, the best combination of of everything, of, again, symmetry, conditioning, fullness, roundness, size, uh, I mean, just you, you name it, he has it all, he has it all checked, and uh, there are some things that are really freaking impressive, especially the shape, and the fullness, the roundness, he's really round, he's really bubbly, 3D, everywhere, I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, he has it in the back, even though he's not as conditioned as uh, some of the guys, but he, he has the best combination of everything, as I said before. So yeah, he, he's gonna win this show, I have no doubt. He, he's in the middle of the lineup for a reason, and yeah, he absolutely brought it, and it is amazing what he brought. This is what he posted the morning of the show. Now, this is already old news, but I have to show it to you, because when I saw this, I was absolutely blown away. Take a look at the, I mean, the, the, the 3D, the bubbly muscle that he has. Just absolutely ridiculous. And a very a very interesting fact is that he is weighing only 202 pounds, guys. 202. He's not even close to 212. So he has 10 pounds of room to grow. Could he get more conditioned? Sure, he could look more conditioned, but I don't think uh, the actual conditioning, like the body fat percent or the water retention is the reason. I think it's simply the muscle maturity, and that comes along with years of training, and he is a beginner pretty much in this in this whole game. So over the years, we're gonna see ridiculous improvements from this guy. If he keeps his work ethics at this level where they are at right now, he may very well win the Mr. Olympia one day. I think so, in the open, not on, not just at 212, but 212 first and then the open. It's a bold prediction, I know, but I can see it. What about you? Nick Walker decided to update us with two more photos before the Chicago Pro, before his division starts. And uh, here you can see his backside, and this is what I've been telling you before. 
So he is very, very impressive from the front, but he's also very impressive from the back. He's not lacking anything from the back. He has the glutes dialed in. He is dry through and through, like lower back is conditioned and everything. You cannot really see a lot. I mean, this is not the best light lighting. I don't know why he took fo took a photo here, but you can see the shape, the symmetry, the size. You cannot really see a lot of uh, conditioning part, but trust me, he will be just peeled on the stage and hard like a rock. A front pose as well, most muscular, one hand on hip. And here you can see a little bit more, so you can see his chest under the lighting. It's separated, it's full. Look at the size of those veins on his <laughs> inner thighs. Can he win this show? I think he can, and I think he will. What do you think? We also have an update of Ian Wallier, who just tagged himself in his basement, and he says, only one thing on my mind, Mr. Olympia. So he's working hard on it. He's one of those guys who just love to prep. He said it just moments ago uh, on Fouad um, uh podcast that I just watched. He says that everything feels better on prep for him. Like his sex drive, he's working harder, like his work headaches, uh, he's more productive, I mean. Uh, he feels good, he enjoys food and everything is just good. He doesn't get tired or anything. It is insane. I mean, if you, ha if you have that kind of feeling while prepping, he will never lose it, like, uh, if an injury doesn't stop him, nothing will. He will not fade away, like, uh, with, with years of suffering through, through all the preps. That happens to guys very often, they burn out. He will not burn out, if he feels that way, and he says he does. So, let's wait and see what he shows at the Mr. Olympia stage in two months, and then, I mean, he's still young, he's still very young, he's like 30 right now, or 29 even, I think he's 30. And you guys know that they say that bodybuilders, like open bodybuilders, the big guys, they look the best at their uh, about 35 years of age. That's when they flourish the best. That's when the maturity kicks in and everything else. Even like this, I'm sure he's going to crack the top 10 at the Mr. Olympia. But in five years of uh, adding more maturity to this physique, wow, let's wait and see where he lands. We have a little physique update of Chris Bumstead. It is in black and white. And now you can start to see some cuts on his physique. His stomach starts to look leaner, a lot leaner. Uh, he's full, he's big, he's symmetrical as always. And it is your Chris Bumstead. This is your Mr. Olympia Classic Physique Champion. And I don't think anybody will dethrone him this year or any other year, actually. If everything goes well for him, if his, uh, you know, that kidney disease doesn't flare up, he will be fine, he will win. Who knows how many Mr. Olympias, probably like, he has the potential to win like 10 of those, because he's exactly what the judges have been asking for. Unless somebody with exactly the same build shows up with better arms, which is not very likely to happen. This guy has everything pretty much perfect, aside from arms a little bit, but everything else just spot on, and I think he will win this year too. Unfortunately, I will not be competing at this year's show. I will get into the details at, a, at another video. This injury was sustained and it's being taken care of right now. But if I was to keep going the direction I was going, um, it would have probably impacted my entire career. I want to let everybody know that I'm mentally okay. Well, that sucks. That sucks. We will not see Flex Lois on Mr. Olympia stage. And we all have been so excited about it. It would have been an amazing experience for us fans to watch, to witness. And it's not going to happen, unfortunately. So, as Flex just said, he will explain in the future, in, a, in another video, why is he exactly giving up on this prep, uh, not competing at the Mr. Olympia. But apparently it's an injury. It's an injury that has been sustained, so it's not something that's going to ruin his career the way it is right now. But if he kept pushing through it, it would have done just that. So he probably he probably tore a muscle or something like that. And he got it fixed. He got an operation, a surgery. And now he needs to heal up. Uh, we don't know exactly what is it. We will find out. Maybe it's not that. This is just me assuming. But anyways, bad news. Sad news for the end of this video. Unfortunately, we started very positive, but we're ending it with... With, with bad news, so no, Flex Lewis will not do the Mr. Olympia, even without him, it's gonna be an amazing Mr. Olympia, it's gonna be very exciting, but he was a big factor of that excitement. 
he definitely was. So you will not see him compared to Phil Heath, compared to Brandon Curry, compared to Hadi Chopin and the other guys. It is what it is, guys. These things happen. Hopefully we'll see him next year in Mr. Olympia 2021. But for now, it is what it is. Tell me what do you think about this whole situation down below in the comment section. Like the video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe for more bodybuilding videos like this. All the best, guys, and keep it old school.